Viewers, how are you? Good evening, good day. It's a beautiful Thursday here in Pennsylvania, and we have got a banger for you. We're going to fire up our brew today. We're going to be talking about Cranko Tin Street Kingpin. Not the Cranko that's been done 7,458 times and every single channel has a, has a pitch for them and a brew list for them. We're not doing that Cranko. But the Cranko that we are doing is the new Cranko from War of the Spark. Now that Cranko is going to be a good time and I'm very, very excited. I'm excited to have all of you here. It's uh, it's going to be a good show. I know that there was a lot of interest to, to brew this particular version of Cranko, mainly because he hasn't been done and done and, and done and, and, and done and done and, and done again. So we are going to try something a little bit new tonight um, in terms of the brew. We're going to really just try to, you know, get in there and, and have some fun with it. It's going to be an interesting brew. Um, Cranko can be, this particular Cranko can be built in a, a vast number of ways. It can, it can be brewed in a, a Voltron way. It can be brewed in a um, just strict combat fashion. It can be put together um, extra combats, all kinds of stuff. And what we're going to go over tonight is kind of what what does this Cranko really encapsulate? What does he bring together um, and bring to the table that's unique to every other deck that you might see at your table? For those of you that might be new to the channel, my name is Mike. Some people call me the designer. I am going to be your captain, the, the chief, the runner of the ship for this evening's show. But I'm not the only one making any decisions in here. We got a whole chat for you guys to jump in and hang out and, and talk and interact with each other um, to go over what we're, what we're going to brew tonight. I'm going to take suggestions from you guys. We're going to talk about the cards that are good. We're going to talk about the cards that are bad. For you guys that are new brewers, the new stuff that we're going to go over is kind of defining how to pick out what direction to go through with your commander um we're on episode three right now we did some polls in facebook to pick out our our uh our commander for this week and vast majority of the people they they really love this cranker so i'm really excited to dive into it once we get everything moving here um shout out to spike feeders uh I, i've been talking to them today they they spent some time um, talking to me on um uh, in Twitter and and they got me in their discord and they they sent me over uh, you know they announced to their their discord that we were gonna do this viewing tonight we're gonna do this show tonight um, really welcoming me welcoming me with open arms into that community um, I, I couldn't have asked for nicer people um, I love watching their show so if you're on YouTube and checking them out spike feeders they do a lot of CEDH brews and really like awesome uh, a competitive style deck play and it's really interesting to watch because it's stuff that you wouldn't normally see um you know everybody's flash hulk and everything else out there but they build some really interesting stuff um they actually inspired me to build my uh, taste of karlov deck um which is one of my stronger decks at this point um it's not a cdh brew per se because I, I don't have a lot of the tutors to make it win just right out of the gate um What's up, Timmy? How you making out, my man? Um, it, it's not one of those that that you know fires right off the handle, um, but it definitely, definitely is a powerful deck. Um, so let's see what we can get in here. Um, we're we're gonna do a couple things. So the way that I run my show um, is I kind of sit down and in the first half hour or so. Um, we really go over kind of how the deck is meant to to, to play out. Um, what are the things that we're trying to really accomplish? And how are we going to go about accomplishing those things um, in, in a way that's, that's you know, a, a nice, comfortable pace um, that, that's fun for everybody. For those of you that are new to deck brewing, that's really what I started this whole show for. Um, is to teach people how to 
to how to brew these decks. Um, my very first deck that I brew was a Dragon's deck. I, I share this story all the time. Um, I put 26 lands in it, thinking one land every fourth turn was going to get there for me. It was a five-color Dragon's deck. They immediately, the first time I brought it out, I was murdered on the table for three hours straight. Um, and honestly, it was a, it was a, it was a tough experience. Um, to learn how to brew these decks is something that takes a lot of time and it, it, it it's complicated and how all of the nuances work right we're not dealing with standard decks or modern decks or legacy we're not dealing with a four of format we're dealing with singleton singleton format what's up mtg young mage how you making out my man um singleton format is very difficult to brew from a consistency standpoint, because you you get one copy of your cards, you don't peel through the deck and get four copies of everything, and, and run through the the deck list that way. You get one card, so you need to make sure that all of the value is in every single card you draw. There's something that's going to happen every single time, and there's an art to this, and that's what's really difficult for newer brewers to really grasp. They don't get that kind of that that intensity that you need um, to focus in on. They they focus in on, I want to do this one combo. I want to do this one thing. For me, it was I want to play with hella strong dragons, all night long, and that's great. But it's kind of like you know the destination, but you have no means to get there, right? You, you know you want to go to the beach on Saturday, but you got no ride to get there. That that's what that feeling is like. I. I'm going to provide to you the vehicle of brewing these decks up. That way, when you go to your Friday nights and you're hanging out with all your boys and you're whipping up your commander decks, you are going to win some games. You're going to get all the feel goods. People are going to be impressed, ask you what your cards are, what's going on. And to that point, all of the decks that we brew here are going to be on moxfield.com and they're going to be underneath the deck design show profile i'm going to show you how to get to there real quick in the moxfield listing just so that you can see moxfield.com is the website that we're going to use consistently throughout our show um, it's my favorite deck brewing website i think it does everything that the other deck sites try to do um, but way better and way more aesthetically pleasing it just looks better it functions better it's a little bit more intuitive they are working on it every day throughout the week to improve it and make it better for you guys. So it's a consistently growing and 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 wonderful kind of uh, deck building website. So we're going to take a, a little bit of dive in here um, and check it out. So browsing our public decks is gonna, just going to show you some of the decks that were recently made, right? So an hour ago, somebody made this combat deck. Um, looks like with Kahiji, uh, we got a Gave deck. We got some some thud. If we keep going down, it's it's a lot of commander players, um, but there are other formats that you can brew in here. You can brew it pretty much anything, but commander is what we're going to focus on. So, with that said, I'm going to sign into the show here. I'm not going to show you guys my password because that would be weird. I'd show up and there'd be all kinds of crazy stuff in here. So we're gonna take our trip down our little our little road here. So let's talk about Cranko here. Cranko 10 Street Kingpin. Now, the original Cranko is a Cranko that you can tap and it's going to double your goblins, basically, that's on the battlefield. All right. Highly token centric, highly overrun, high overrun potential against your opponents, right? I've seen a Cranko deck create 64 goblins on turn four and one shot people within, a, you know, it's CEDH talk at that point, the speed that you can make goblins. But what we want to do here. Uh, the site is moxfield.com. I'll type it in there for you there, young mage. Um, moxfield.com. So, the way that this Cranko works, this Cranko wants to do similar things with where we want to create a billion tokens. We want to really make a ton of goblin creatures, but we do it differently, right? There's no tap effect here. The number of goblins that we're going to make is directly proportional to the strength that Cranko has. Okay, so let's read them real quick. For those of you that are going to be listening to the podcast, which I do summarize um, and put up on, on YouTube and whatnot. 
It's two and a red. Whenever Cranko Tin Street Kingpin attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Then create a number of one one red goblin creature tokens equal to Cranko's power. He comes onto the board as a one two, um, three mana legendary creature. You know your normal commander stuff. But right out of the gate, you can see that Cranko is very different from his other brother, right? So how do we want to brew this? Um, how do we want to take the time and dive into to seeing how this is going to go? The way that we want to focus kind of primarily, we want to look at what Cranko wants first. We want a high power Cranko, all right? Now, whenever you say, okay, I want a very strong commander, right? It tends to lead people into what's called a Voltron strategy. The Voltron strategy is I'm going to level up my guy. I'm going to get him big and strong. I'm going to make him a 47-47 and kill everybody with commander damage. And that's fine. But Cranko is a weird kind of Voltron strategy. We're not focused so much. If you can kill somebody with commander damage with Cranko, that's fine. But it's not the strategy that we're really going for. What we really want to do is we want to get that that incremental bump up from Cranko. We want to get him up to, to the power level we're looking for. And then attack with him to get all the goblins out, right? So it's still a token strategy, but it's triggered by that Voltron build out. It's really interesting how that whole thing comes together, especially given how the old Cranko worked, right? So the old Cranko, tap it and double your goblins, you know, that instant speed, you know, that immediate effect. This is a little bit different. So what are we looking for here? We're looking for some Voltron strategy. Exactly, Timmy. So we want to abuse those ETBs, um, get into that point. So how do we want to build it? We need haste enablers. We're going to get a little bit of Voltron strategy in here. We're going to get some high power on him to get really those goblins going. We're going to focus on the ETBs for those goblins. Now, the ETBs are the goblins, right? The goblin tokens we make don't have a, I enter the battlefield and I do this thing. But there are a ton of enchantments that we want to dig through that can give us really powerful effects. And we're going to, we're going to dive into those a little bit. I'll show examples of them as we go. We want to get those ETBs. And then to finish off, it's really, it, goblins are known for being able to be sacked for some sort of value, right? So a huge card that most people know about is Goblin Bombardment. Goblin Bombardment is a huge powerhouse with this deck, only because if we make enough goblins, we can swing with everything. We can do plenty of incidental damage, which we'll go over here in our first kind of 20 minutes of discussing how we want to build it. And then we could sack those goblins to do damage to face and really clean up the game nicely, right? That's, that's how we want to wrap it up. This is not going to be a CEDH brew. So if we're going to, if, if we're thinking about a CEDH brew, Cranker's really not your guy. But this is a very interactive, very fun, overrun style that we're going to build with this guy. Um, Aggravated Assault and Skirk Prospector are, Prospector are definitely going to be portions of this deck um i'm gonna get into the 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 first page here so i i put together a little bit of a beginning list here and what i did was i broke the list down into some effects that we're gonna kind of you know work into this all right so what we can do in moxfield is you can actually pick your cards put them in your list and then start throwing tags at them all right so when you put the tags in there you can split your list up based upon what you want out of the card, right? What is your draw package? What's your ping packages? What's your haste strategies? What's your ramp strategies? Um, what's the, the protection, your your effect doubler, stuff like that. And those are things that, you know, we, we can hone in on. So um, examples of our... Um, our ping strategy. So again, going back to that incidental damage, the incidental damage is kind of defined as something that happens because something else happened, right? It's these small little pings of damage that amount to a lot over time. Now, some people were saying war storm surge, we should put war storm surge in there. That would be a great card. War storm surge is a great card, but it also costs, I think five or six mana impact tremors is two mana. 
and it comes right down and it does the same thing with basically the same amount of damage that Warstorm Surge would get us. Warstorm Surge says that whenever a creature enters the battlefield, it's going to deal damage equal to that creature's power to target player, creature, etc. Um, I'll, I'll pull it up here so that everybody can see it. Um, so that we can kind of see the difference between the two. So Warstorm Surge, um, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So Warstorm Surge in a lot of decks is a powerhouse card, man. It does damage. It does work on a lot of these people. So the the Warstorm Surge, one, way too much mana to, to the point of Timmy. Two, our goblins that we're making are one ones. So that incidental damage that we're really looking for, Impact Tremors is going to give that to us the same way that Warstorm Surge works. There's no reason to run Warstorm Surge over Impact Tremors because we're not running anything that's got big power out of the gate. What we're going to do is build that big power around Cranko to get all those goblins. If Cranko goes to attack and Cranko say he's a 15-15, a well, as soon as we turn him sideways, 15 goblins are going to enter the battlefield and Impact Tremors is going to deal 15 damage to any or to each opponent. So you're going to deal 45 damage using Impact Tremors just off of that push. That's insane value. And that's what we're gunning for with Cranko. That's how we want to really build this out and get those, those big power trunks. So let's let's take a, uh, another look here. So Skirk, Pro, uh, Skirk Prospector, that's another one that was um, said in the chat already. So he says um, he's one red, sacrifice a goblin, add one red mana. Notoriously in red, there isn't a lot of ways to ramp. So we want to take the time and figure out how to meet those mana requirements as we go along to make sure that we're always hitting those reds right we're always hitting that mana necess uh, necessity so that we can play everything that we want on curve to stay on curve and really kind of kick this thing home um skirt prospector is great for that um, we're going to be making a ton of goblins so being able to sacrifice one or two to meet those mana requirements when needed is really beneficial um when cranko does his thing for the first time it might catch some people off guard. When Cranko tries to do his thing for the second or third time, it may be a little bit more challenging. Um, people will probably end up being real upset about it. So, the way that we kind of try to get around that is by playing Swiftfoot boots or protection-based equipments, Right or cards, right? There's plenty of instants and sorceries that can grant us these hex proofs and, and stuff like that. But in red, you know, equipments work okay. So this also gives us haste, which is a huge plus. So Cranko is a three drop. Boots are two, so we can drop the boots. We can try to ramp Cranko out a little bit, and you know, maybe Skirk Prospector is out there. Maybe we just sack him for that extra one mana to equip, and then we swing in and add those counters on not the ideal play but if you're playing in kind of a calmer meta it may be something you can do and just you know get that value out there immediately so the swift foot boots basically are in here a lot for the protection i don't want somebody swords in cranko as soon as i add all the stuff to them and make them all big and and that's it right okay well i'm gonna swords them and that's the end of that we want to make sure that he's got that protection on him so that we don't risk having this huge build up and then boom done when we actually get in there to to start building out maybe there's some stuff in there like effect doublers so when we have activated abilities or or triggered abilities we can if it's not a mana ability we can copy it with the illusionist bracers so basically it's going to take cranko if he's a 10 10 well it's going to trigger that cranko ability twice so we're going to get 20 goblins. We're going to deal 20 damage to each opponent if Impact Tremors is out. We're going to we're going to have all those goblins out for the bombardment if we want to deal damage to face that way. Um, again, huge swings, huge value. That's really what we're gunning for. And then we have some of the the red draw. Um, the red draw is a little weird. A lot of it is draw to or discard or exile. 
um, and play till end of turn, or you know, exile these cards you can play till the end of next turn. Um, a lot of that kind of stuff. So we want to add those in there to just kind of work our way through the library to really kind of capitalize on the deck that we've built because we don't want to be stuck, right? That would be kind of shitty and we don't want to deal with that. So um, that's really what we're going to brew this deck as. And I think it'd be a, it'll be a lot of fun if you guys go in and you can print the deck list out and have it there and maybe brew the deck up if you have 90% of the cards and take them with you and you can use it on Friday nights. Um, you can proxy the deck list out. You can do any kind of th things like that and, and really get a lot of value out of just participating and and seeing this deck go hard. So draw is even worse than Rampant Red. You are 100% correct, sir. Um, but... Thank God for mana rocks, right? Um, so, ramp is something we're definitely going to need to address. And thank God I have you guys here because I can kind of lean on you guys as much as you can lean on me, right? So, we want to run all the mountains. We want to run all the lands that can possibly give us extra manas, right? Um, Ancient Tomb is a huge one. It's, it's a really good value. Um, I would say Temple of the False God, but, you know, that's a little iffy around the edges depending on where you're at. Um, temple can be a little, little risky cause you could draw it on your opening hand and not want to mull your opening hand. And then you're just stuck with that for a hot minute. So, um, we'll, we'll air all that stuff out. Um, so if we're sitting here, we're, 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 we're going to brew this guy up. Um, we want to talk also about the extra combat steps. So extra combat is going to be super cool here. We'll be able to untap our creatures. After this main phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. So Seize the Day is an interesting one. It gives us the ability to untap. Um, what, what link? Where we got? Um, so it gives us the ability to untap our Cranko and then tap him again to again boost up uh, his power, get more of those goblins out. Not to mention that the goblins that he makes aren't tapped right so if we go back to this you're just making a bunch of one ones so those one ones when they come in they're untapped so if you get a secondary combat phase out of it you can just swing with those guys too um it there's a certain kind of power play to that which is really cool there's a certain little bit of interaction and and, and fun and excitement that come with that so I don't think that the way that we build Cranko is to murder the entire table in one turn. Can it happen? Very much so. But that's not necessarily the way that we're going to build this. It, it's kind of one of those things that happens if we get there. But the way that I want to go around this is to really focus in on getting those bump ups to making sure we're hitting our ramp so that we can play a nice... Uh-oh. I'm, I'm sorry, Timmy. I don't... I didn't get a link there, so um, we can talk about the ramps, though, if, if you want. That's so. While we're chatting here, let, let's let's dive into the list. So 